They look confident. Is that what you see in them, especially experience as well? Absolutely. They play with a ton of energy uh, and excitement. They, they, they uh, play with a passion for the game that we preach to our guys. So uh, it's good to see that, and it's, no, it's good to know the kind of opponent we're about to see. When you guys went back and looked at Darrell Scott, what did you see out of him, and, and how much did that game maybe benefit him moving forward? Yeah, every, every snap counts when, when it comes to this freshman class, and uh, whether it's a guy that is now playing his sixth or seventh game or a guy that played in his first game, uh, with every snap they're going to gain valuable experience. What would the unit kind of banged up. I mean, just how much do you expect it? I mean, he's, is he going to be in it just like he was last game? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, that, that whole crew is, is ready to go. What does Ole Miss do specifically that makes them so good on defense? Well, they have a ton of experience. They, they return nine of their starters from last season, nine out of the 11, plus uh, I, I believe one of the non-returning starters is still on their 2D depth chart. So they have a ton of experience. Uh, they play with great speed. Uh, schematically, they're very sound. They they, they, they you know, multiple in what they do, um, and and they play with great passion. I, I give them a lot of credit. They're they're very confident and, and they play that way. Like what did Darrell show you in his first first game? Uh, I like the way he played. You know, uh, demonstrated a good understanding of the offense and ran the ball hard. How much does he need to learn just from a, a you know, picking up the plays and protections? On yeah, every every rep is going to count for those guys, uh, for every one of those freshmen. And, and uh, I just mentioned to Paul a second ago that whether it's a um, whether it's a guy, a freshman entering his sixth game or a freshman playing for the first time, uh, they, they grow with each rep just uh, when it comes to the understanding of the speed of the game and, and, and what it takes from a technique standpoint. Mike, when you look at your offensive line, I know people from the outside might not see growth every week, but are you seeing that growth inside with, with, with what they need to be doing? Yeah, you know, again, a guy like Jason Robertson and Coleman Thomas and, and all those guys uh, are, are gaining valuable experience, uh, communicating on every snap, communicating better. Uh, you know, seeing more and more schematically from each opponent we play. You have a guy like Durrell whose skill set seems to be very different from Jalen Hurd's. Do you mix up some plays and come up with something a little bit different to match what he can do a little bit more? Or is he just kind of throw him into the other stuff that you do with everybody else? Well, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say his skill set is necessarily quite different. Maybe a little bit more limited just because of uh, his knowledge base and experience. So, yes, there is... Um, there's probably a limited menu you, you call with him, uh, but at the same time, he, he's only going to learn by doing. So you, you have to expose him to the whole playbook. Those, Mike, those, those, two, those two Ole Miss safeties have such a, a great reputation, yeah. and they, they seem to show up quite a bit on film, but you all would, would know more than we would. How, how good are those? Yeah, the, there? You know, their secondary in general is outstanding. The nickel, uh, number 12, I believe his name is Tony Connor. Number 25, Cody Pruitt. Boy, those, those guys, they, they play fast. They're very, very physical. Uh, you, you can tell they strike you, you know, and, and uh, that to me, uh, obviously they, they have a lot of experience up front uh, with Kim Dietschy and the whole crew, but um, their, their secondary really uh, sets the tone for them. Justin said yesterday they disguise a lot back there. How, they, how, how much challenge do they put mentally on the quarterback, and how hard is that with the with the rush that's coming for right. for a quarterback to keep that mental focus the way well, it's supposed to? Well, as much as anything, uh, it, it just – it causes you to be more specific with what you're doing. You know, I, I, I can't necessarily give him full field reads and things like that because uh, some of the coverages uh, are disguised well or, or indistinguishable one from the other, except maybe a subtle, a subtle alignment of the safety or nickel or something like that. Are they as polished of a defense as you played this year? They're, they're across the board, uh, have great experience and great talent. You know, again, there's, there's no apparent weakness there. Number, number two, they're ranked number two in the country country in scoring defense uh, they, they lead the country in interceptions um, you know they're, they're, they're a very good defense so what allows them to ball hawk so well uh, again I'd say experience and speed you know they, they, they play with good vision on the quarterback um, they're, they're, they're just very sound Michael, overall in terms of what you've gotten from your receivers I know there was so much talk about depth with that group going into the season and it's certainly been tested what have you seen from the guys who are kind of starting to have to play more reps now yeah you know it's uh, obviously when you have depth that uh, is to your advantage because it, it takes a little bit of strain off the total number of snaps that each guy has to play. And when when uh, you can when you can take that away a little bit, it, they can play faster and harder when they are in. So uh, losing guy like Josh Smith and, and obviously Von Pearson being as limited as he was up until now, um, you know, has caused more guys to play more snaps and, and uh, you know that that wear and tear throughout the course of a game and course of a season takes um, you know continu continues to accumulate. What impresses you the most about Ole Miss's defense? They, they don't give up many points. 
you know, they're, like I said a second ago, they're number two in the country in scoring defense, uh, and they, they take the ball away. Uh, they they um, lead the country in interceptions with 12. And, and on top of that, uh, they, they don't give up many explosive plays. And that's the philosophy of their defense. Uh, you know, they, they, they just keep the ball in front of them. Uh, and and when, they, when they do come up, they, they definitely strike you with some violence. Do they throw a lot of different looks and stuff every snap? Actually? Yeah, they'll move around a bit and play uh, multiple coverages and do a, good, a very good job of disguising their coverages. How good is Justin Worley at pre-snap reads? He's done a good job up to now um, of, of, of seeing the coverage pre-snap and understands the challenges that we're faced with uh, going into this game and, and uh, the ability that they have in disguising their coverages. Mike, with, with the way they play, like you said, they like to run up to the ball and give you the underneath stuff. Do you kind of have to be more patient with your play calling and just kind of take what they give you? You, you could tell philosophically that's what they're trying to do. Uh, I've, always, uh, I've often talked about the ability to get first downs on first and second down is the key to sustaining drives. Um, staying out of third down situations uh, just statistically um, is to your benefit because you, you, if you're if you're converting 50% of your third downs, then you'll be towards the top five in the country. So what they're philosophically trying to do is get you into third down situations, get you into multiple third down situations in the course of a drive, or at least make you string together eight, nine, nine play drives. Uh, and, and you can tell that's what, uh, that's what their philosophy is. When you look at them, are they as good in the defensive line as they are at linebackers, they are in the secondary? Yeah, they're, they're, they're very balanced from a skill standpoint. Uh, they return nine of the 11 starters. Uh, on their defensive team from last season, and, and uh, I, I think I think they lost one linebacker and one defensive lineman. I can't remember exactly who who, who the non-returners are, but uh, yeah, they're very talented across the board, and, and uh, you know, don't show any apparent weaknesses when it comes to a particular position. We good?